Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. And uh, it's uh, six o'clock. It's uh, the date is ten ten, and I welcome you to the Land and Buildings Committee meeting. And um, this meeting is going to be about the vendors at uh, the weirs on the boardwalk, uh, specifically the food vendors at the northern end, uh, where there's been uh, a request by the Ames is to remove those vendors and um, so we'll have a discussion on that tonight. Uh, I think what I'd like to do to start off with is I'd like to have uh, Joe Driscoll if you have, want to add anything to your previous things uh, uh, you're welcome to come up and then I'll have Paul also. <coughs> Thank you very much Counselor. Welcome, um, Joe. Just for clarity I've talked to you folks about 10 times on this so all of that put that back on the table for you I don't want to have to you know yeah. waste your time rehashing it um, we've taken a look uh, we've requested some additional maps and whatnot of the area from the city manager's office uh, possible different locations or different ways to deal with this because as I said at our last meeting we're uh, very interested in, in seeing something work out and not necessarily have it be at anyone's detriment um, one interesting idea that we came up with, which I think would involve a lot of work potentially, um, is actually to go down into the area. So if you're looking at Lakeside Avenue, go to the opposite end of this, the street where they are currently, cross the boardwalk and onto the grass area between the parking lot and the boardwalk that exists there. There are no, currently no vendors there. A lot of uh, portable toilets are kept there, which was the original site for what we're talking about here actually um, so I think that would necessitate a change to the vending space uh, maps and whatnot which I, I'm not sure which committees that would have to go in front of but I think that would enable uh, in you accompany that with certain restrictions on these spots that we've talked about again my my main concerns are sight lines uh, customer um, patron management if you will they're all kind of out and about uh, really blocks the area up especially with the trains there um, and you know they're now if it's restricted to say dry goods so motorcycle parts or uh, dry uh, or t-shirts anything like that those patrons are now flowing through these tents again something I've talked about before um, we're then able to kind of achieve both things because now you're not removing these vendors from a, a hotbed of the area I mean that that parking lot's a prime location all of the individuals who come in on motorcycles exit that area along that concrete path that goes from the parking lot up onto the boardwalk there's really no other way you can go some may go back out up the ramp uh, to the beach that you ride down to get to the beach but that that's a lot more traffic I don't really see anybody do that when I work down there for the, the charity that's, that's down there so it would continue to provide them exposure to a significant amount of the customers and, and patrons of the event uh, it would remove the concerns that the Ames family has now as long if we can set some rules about the use of those spaces um, and it actually increases the amount of spaces that the city would have to provide to vendors, thus increasing the, the, uh, the money that can be made by the city, which I know has been a concern, not wanting to decrease what the city can bring in during that event. So if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to talk about them. I, just, I don't want to waste anyone's time, really, since we have talked about this so much. But again, our, our concerns really are with this location, these things being these physical boxes that visually uh, block and also physically block people, the crowds that block people because nobody can really even see that there's a business behind it, um, and then the increased height of these things that's occurred over the years. So alleviating all of those things and providing these vendors with a, a, an adequate space to be that also exposes them, I think really is a good compromise. Uh, this is something we came up with about 20 minutes ago uh, at one of our most recent meetings we do have a representative of East Oaks flight craft here who is in on that conversation with us uh, they own the pier they have vendors on the pier as well uh, so this is a concern for a new business owner in that area is it, and we were happy to have them to talk with them about it so I uh, haven't had an opportunity to address that with attorney Fitzgerald or anybody he represents so I We'll wait to hear his answer but I think this is a real way that we can compromise this thing and get to a solid solution that takes care of everyone's concerns okay thank you Joe I just want to make sure I understand the option that um, you just presented mm -hmm. physically where it, your look so <clears throat> if you could orient me to uh, better so if I'm 
coming into the weir from passing the weir's sign and coming mm -hmm. down on, on so if you're it's frankly easy have you gone into the weir, the beach parking lot itself yes okay so if you're in that parking lot yes and you go basically up towards the boardwalk the parking lot ends basically where the boardwalk truly st where the wood starts and there's a there's a path that goes up th up through almost to the bathhouse that's right there mm -hmm. and then there's stairs up onto the boardwalk and right now a big use for that grass area is a lot of porta potties there mm -hmm. um, and it would I, I think there's actually still quite about quite a bit of available space there as well uh, but it may require a little bit of shuffling of those units but establishing new spaces there to accommodate these vendors keeps them right in the flow of the, of the pedestrian traffic i hope i oriented you yeah. well if i if i need to do a drawing i can <laughs> okay um and then i guess in terms of your option in terms of the there's cost to to accomplish that relocation um you may not have, since you came up with it only 20 minutes ago <laughs> um would you participate in the uh, the cost of because the city has would have to assume run electric and utility and all sorts of other things to I believe that that was another concern we had raised I, I think that gets everyone pretty close to being able to have those services down in that end because <coughs> the bathhouse would have water sewer yeah, I, and uh, electricity right there at it I guess even if that the, the services are there there's still um, thousands of dollars of cost to establish that as a location I would imagine yes I, I I would need to talk to the city manager or somebody about what that would entail I'm, I'm unsure of that piece but um, as of right now our understanding is that the present spots have some sort of gray water mitigation uh, system that's there correct yeah um, I don't know about the water supply and electricity supply well. thing okay the city paid to put that in several years ago. Mm -hmm. so there's hookups there mm -hmm. that we that we've made. So that would be within be able to get rid of the stuff properly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would have been what within the past five oh, seven longer years. Than that. Longer than that. Uh, well, the, this only started ten years ago. Yes. Having the vendors I there. So. Yeah, with, it's been a while. It's been, it's been there. I think we had some temporary hookups, at least for the gray water and maybe the water. And then when the water department was doing some work in the area, they uh, made some more permanent areas yeah. they could shut off and handle <coughs> it more efficiently. Um, I think the electricity has probably been there for longer than that. But uh, we did make some upgrades. It may have been there initially. It might have been a little more casual. And I think now it's got a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I, I think at the beginning it was it. more we, we laid it out and then took it down type thing. Mm. But then we made it permanent after a while so one more question hey, um, when you were describing the option you were describing it as the existing location as other than food mm -hmm. um, whereas I think your concerns that you've raised have been visual and traffic so you you're not taking the position that it would have to be restricted from food you're you're taking the position that flow and line of sight is your your chief concerns well I, again I, it and I may be using food as too general of a label then to place on it but I think all of those things are necessary if you have a food vendor so uh, those structures inherently require fire suppression systems and all that that's why they are what they are um, so that that was why I was speaking so generally with that label again yes our concerns are what these tents are you know originally I guess I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, well, I want to distinguish between um, what I think could be interpreted as being you don't want food competition near your, mm -hmm. your your client versus you want your client to be able to fairly compete. I, I'm just trying to understand what the position. Well, is. the competition is is the key. Yes, and and competition what? in what sense? Competition. That the fair competition. Fair of. competition. Um, I mean, as and. You know, a couple of you came down and saw it. I mean, right now you physically cannot see it, and they these phys these large structures, just the way they're designed, the entire vending space is individuals inside them working in them. Not a single customer they have actually comes inside of the vending space, um, and there's currently no crowd control that that deals with that. So those are the concerns there I mean that you you can't see them you can't get to them um, even if they were to put a sign in front of their place you can't see that either um, so in reality yes and I'm using that food label because 
that's what they are. I, I'm not sure of any other type of dry good that has a, a structure like that that's necessary for it. But our concern, yes, is the, is the structure itself. It's the size, the visual block, the physical block. Those are the things we want addressed. Any other questions? Uh, Armin? Thank you. Any questions? No, I, I just uh, I think hit them all. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joe. Um, Paul, did you want to say anything? Please. Okay. Is out there too. Uh, again, Paul Fitzgerald representing Jerry Gosher and the Matthews family uh, who have rented these spaces the past several years from you folks. Um, appreciate you taking the time to go over this once again. Um, and I know if he were here, he'd chuckle, so I can say this years ago at, at this table, I told Neil Young that if you say the same thing louder or you say the same thing many, many times, it doesn't get any better. So I'm going to be real short. Um, I, I take it that everyone has received the correspondence that I submitted to City Hall earlier today. Uh, and if that's the case, then I'm not going to go through all the various arguments here. Um, I will react to Joe's suggestion uh, very quickly, although uh, obviously I haven't had a chance to talk to my folks about it at all. Um, it does seem to me uh, that the, if I understand the area that's being talked about, uh, it would be an area of significantly less traffic than anything up on Lakeside. Um, and the only time that I can ever remember that that was used uh, during motorcycle week for anything even approaching uh, vendor use was 20 years ago or more where there was one year where we had an event on the beach. There was actually a, uh, an area set up on the beach itself for entertainment. Um, there was some vending there and I <coughs> think there might have been some vending in the area that Joe is describing now. Uh, and the reason that it probably hasn't been used or solicited is because there's not going to be much traffic there compared to uh, being up on Lakeside itself or in the uh, current area that's under discussion uh, where these folks have set up in the past. Um, so my guess is that if I had the opportunity to speak to uh, uh, my clients, that they would not be terribly enthusiastic about that particular idea. I won't reject it out of hand uh, and will certainly report it back to them. Uh, but as I said, I can't tell you today uh, definitively what their view on it would be, but I, I, I kind of assume that it would probably be negative compared to the location that's already set up uh, that was specifically built for this. Um, so unless you have questions with regard to the arguments I presented earlier or the written materials that I submitted to you uh, earlier today, um, I will simply close by saying that this is pretty clearly an attempt to stifle competition. Uh, we submitted uh, documents to you that show that there is no real argument from the, uh, the surrounding competing businesses, uh, or at least from many of the surrounding competing businesses. Um, if the uh, petitioners who come before you tonight and earlier uh, put forward a good product, uh, word of mouth will travel and they're going to get the customers that they're looking for. Uh, I don't think that the, uh, the way to go about this is to put artificial constraints on the people who come here and make the rally what it is. Uh, so unless you have questions, I'm all set for now. Thank you again for your time. Um, I had a, if I could. Go ahead. Um, so um, one of the, um, we, got, we had some correspondence, I guess, um, on the desk today that reflected some communication between um, either you, you or Nancy and uh, your, your client about uh, the vending trailer itself. Councilor Hamill came in to see me last week in advance of this and just asked me to get a little bit of additional background regarding the trailer and, and what was required for all of the marquee and stuff going up on top, yes. So um, I guess just having a chance to see this, uh, sure. and maybe I should have seen it earlier, but um, it, uh, I guess, understand that the trailer itself has certain um, set up things around it but I'm just you know I'm looking at you know the line of sight issue and um, you know the this is the right if I could show you what I'm talking about. I, no I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Right. I understand that this has there's um, cooking uh, ventilation that goes up mm -hmm. into the into the area there and that there's some 
the way it gets set up. I'm just wondering, though, if these panels are somehow um, potentially removable to improve line of sight um, uh, situation. I understand that he has to have the 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 venting from the the food to to be safe, et cetera. And I'm not asking you to answer that now, but it, since you're going to go back to him and ask <coughs> talk about that space question, I just wondering if there's any other further mitigation of the line of sight issue could be done, um, you know, without imposing significant costs. On I, I can certainly find that out for you, Henry. Yeah. Um, I will say one thing with regard to the line of sight issue. Um, you know, if, if I stand here, I can't see that black chair behind you. Right. I can see it now. Yeah. Um, and the same thing can be done with the, the, the photographs. Um, I, I, again, think that, that uh, um, rightly or wrongly, th this is an attempt to simply stifle competition, which is not something that we, we do without good motives, um, or without good reason, I should say. Uh, and that, that um, uh, these are the folks, and I don't mean just the, the uh, Gauches and the uh, Matthews, but these are typical of the folks that make this rally what it is. And if we put these artificial constraints on them, uh, it's going to have a, a harmful effect, and, and I would hate to see that spread throughout uh, other aspects of the rally. So, but I, I certainly, uh, um, if, I, uh, if this is not finalized this evening, uh, and I don't know what your intention is, but if it's not finalized this evening, I can certainly get back to you with the uh, technical information on the stand. I mean, it's, it, I don't know, it's up to the chairman, but um, <coughs> I mean, I think if, if there's a proposed alternative, we sh you should at least have the chance to run it by your... Your, your client, I understand that you're probably suggesting come back, but rather be maybe that be helpful to have some conversation between the the parties on that. But um, I guess my if absent that being assuming that your assumptions correct about uh, um, that it wouldn't be a favorable site, the alternative proposed, you know, is there an option to do something about? Um, you know, there still may be something that needs to be in the air, but does it have to be as uh, as as great as I know when I was, you know, down over Motorcycle Week that in you know, the line of sight when you add the train in, you know, you really do get a lot of blockage there. Um, so I guess I'm trying to find out if we can find a a win-win situation here. And I, I do agree that um, with your principle that we shouldn't be trying to squash competition. That was my reason why I asked the question: Is it, you know, fair competition versus, you know an advantage here. I think it we shouldn't be making a change here that's going to advantage one vendor over another, nor should we create a disadvantage, you know. If we can avoid No, I understand that. Yeah. But as I said, I, I the the, the um, I, I do respectfully and I mean the word respectfully disagree with this line of sight argument because um, obviously, uh, you know, my, my example about not being able to see the chair and so forth was kind of crude and quick on the spot. But, it, it, you know, the, the marketplace building is several stories tall. It's there. It's visible. Uh, and it might not be from each and every square foot in that area, uh, but without much trouble, you can locate that building and you know what's going on there. So. Yeah, as far as, as I know, is that piece that's above the lower part, that's where all of the vans and everything right. are. So if you do away with that, they can't, they can't cook anything. Right. Well, I'm just wondering if you can have the, the fan. In other, to me, that, that piece is sort of a decorative, it's kind of like on the, on the middle school, to, so you don't have sort of the uglier look of the, just the fans, motors, and things like that on the HVAC units on the, on the, the roof, you have sort of a screening, and that's to me what the signage around that kind of represents. And so I'm just saying it, it could potentially improve the line of sight. Maybe it doesn't, and maybe it's not even an option. So the um, only thing that could happen would be all of these decorations could be taken down. But yeah. as far as this goes, that's where the, the uh, all of the filters are and stuff. And right. You can't just take that off. If you do, then you can't cook. If you, if so you, we don't know that. We uh, don't know that for sure. I, yes, that's yes, we do. Uh, um, so that if you could find that out for sure. Paul, sure. Paul, uh, if you could go back to your client. Uh, I don't think it's going to be settled tonight. Um, 
I thought maybe it could, but uh, now that a new location was brought up, and um, <clears throat> what I'm wondering is on his uh, trailer, if the two end pieces, I, I know he wrote back a letter saying that it's riveted together and all this stuff here. Right. But uh, And that's what I've been told. Yeah. If these two end pieces, the one in the, on here and Did I just see what you're saying, Bob? Yeah. <coughs> those end pieces oh gotcha okay yeah. so there's one on each side so if you were down the boardwalk further and you know some of the pictures notate looking up towards um, the Ames's property if those side things weren't there you would see right through it it would be just a facade that's what I was type of a thing I understand what you're saying Same. Yeah. Uh, because to tell you the truth I think I think at some other point fairly soon uh, this board is going to actually look at heights on the boardwalk you know some of the heights how high you can go mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know that's probably too high you know, especially with the flags and all that other stuff you know um, I think the, the uh, we're probably going to look into uh, all those banners that they have to be removed uh, so that the site can be better but also it, it you know if you could go back and ask them about the side panels if they yep. can be lowered uh, and that would still probably leave the center inside the trailer, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I do. I follow you. Um, if that's possible. Um, but I, you know, I, I agree with you. Line of sight is what you make it. I mean, you can stand behind the weather vane and not see nothing. So, um, and, and as far as crowding and that there, <clears throat> the train's been coming for years. The crowd's been there for years. Never had a problem with anything. If you go further down on Lakeside Ave, where they just double row parking uh, on the building side, when the motorcycle pulls up, he drives right through the whole crowd that's walking up the street. Hasn't been a problem. So um, another thing uh, I mentioned to the city manager about looking into is maybe the city uh, could put signage uh, in that area with uh, arrows or, or uh, you know small plaques and stuff something like that uh, pointing down the, to the pier with the businesses that are down there and, and also making references to the uh, Ames property up on the hill uh, just for for a direction type thing uh, so but also uh, you know in the packet that uh, Joe gave us or at one time they had uh, They've gone through and get and got uh, signatures about from businesses that didn't want the food vendors there, and then a while later, uh, R.J. Grill and Sharkey's went to the same businesses and they said there was no problem. Mm -hmm. So we got one survey that says they don't want them. Next survey says there's no problem. I think, and, and so maybe Joe can <coughs> clarify this for us. Um, but it, it's it's my understanding that some of the signatures on the first petition that came in were the actual landowners as opposed to uh, business operators, whereas the one that we submitted, I believe, was completely business operators. Yeah, I believe that one. That's true, because uh, on one of the signatures, owner of the weather vane, crazy gringo, and where's the beef? Um, Make them so you, I think you're right. But I think on what that. you got was the ones that were a running from a landlord as opposed to the business operator. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. All so. right. I'm certainly happy to check out that thing about the end caps and the um, well, the entire thing up in there. Yeah, and, and also, you know, you may let them know that uh, we are going to be looking into heights. You know, certain mm -hmm. heights and nothing but above that. So his may not qualify uh, to be there because of that height unless he can do something to reduce the facade of that. I mean, I think the the um, booth itself is fine. The height of the booth is fine. It's just the part that's above it. Okay. And I know that falls down. That's the roof. I understand that. Yeah, and I mean, we can talk <coughs> about that, certainly. I but mean, our, our first priority, obviously, is the location itself. Correct. And these other items, um, although important, are, are secondary items um, from our point of view. But um, And I don't mean by calling them secondary to... to uh, indicate that they're not important because if they're integral parts of the unit, it's a small business. If they're covering up the um, the equivalent of the HVAC, so to speak, yeah. uh, then then that's important as well. So. I understand, but I think also there's got to be some give and take to 
being there or not. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, gotcha. okay. Uh, well, thank you, Paul, okay, for thank your you input. All. Appreciate it. Um, is there any more discussion here on the committee? Uh, I'd like to just yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Is there anything with what Paul just said? No, I think you did a good job. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Just briefly, the issue of the petitions has been brought up. We have been uh, talking to folks that, frankly, because we want to understand why, you know, we approach them with one concern and they sign it and then approach by another. Uh, we have heard that one may have been confused with regard to the second one, but I'll have better clarification for this group on that and get something filed with you. Uh, the only property owner that that concept of it being the property owner versus the business owner uh, would be Ms. Tolios, who's the owner of the weather vane. Otherwise, you're talking about all the people who own and, and operate those businesses there. Um, so it, I presume we're going to, is there any further investigation you need out of us with regard to anything if this, um, uh, with our regards to our proposed option? I don't think so because I know the area you're talking about, but now that would uh, that would involve the city trying to find a new location for all those bathhouses. So I don't think you want to have a sausage stand or a hot dog stand by a outhouse or a porta potty. I mean, yeah. uh, it isn't uh, the most appetizing thing I could think of, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, and, um, and honestly, with I mean, actually, the, I talked to the city manager about that. Uh, a week or so ago, I says, well, you know, how about down in the beach area or whatever? But, you know, we kind of came up with the same conclusion that uh, Paul stated is that, you know, people park a lot of bikes there, but once they're parked, there's very few people walking around down there. And then they're down over the embankment. So they probably, even if they got the high marquees, may not even be seen. Well, I mean, where I'm talking is the path right next to the boardwalk. So I think the visual would be fine. And then, I, again, I've worked in that lot for yeah, I know you several have. years and uh, I mean you just have a steady stream of people focused on this one area so that's why we thought this would be advantageous um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't address a, a couple things here though that um, and I'm not looking to create a back and forth but the comment about um, that the vendors are the people who come here and make the event what it is I, I think is a real disservice uh, as a statement to my client my client uh, as a major property owner in that area, there's many property owners in that area who've dedicated time, resources, effort, have had headaches, blood, sweat, and tears, the whole thing to that event and to that area. And to suggest that they do not and that the vendors who come here are who makes it the area. I mean, you're talking to people who serve on the Motorcycle Week Association board and have a seat equal to that of this city. You know, they, they care in, that much about the event to be moved, to try to have that much of an impact on it. It's a board of directors of a nonprofit organization. That's what they do. So, again, I would just be remiss if I, di I didn't bring that up. I mean, these people definitely care about this event. Definitely care about this event, what it can do for this area, and are you know employ local people and are and are trying to do the best they can with this. So, um, I would I would definitely say that they they have a lot to do with what that event is, and what it can be. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So, Go ahead, Henry. You had put out one other option. I guess another option I'd say to you is, to my understanding, and I forgive me because I don't know as much about Motorcycle Week as most of the rest of you, but there's other um, areas that potentially could be placed as an option that the Ameses have, I think, ownership of. Is there is it worthwhile between the next time we have a meeting for you guys to talk to see if there's another solution that hasn't been proposed? Swap vendors, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll discuss that with them. That wasn't something that we raised, so I have no problem talking about that. Okay, very right. good. Thank you. Paul, did you want to add anything anymore? No. Okay. Does the committee members... Uh, Looks like this one. Huh? I think there's some audience that participation... Okay, come on up. Uh, Ryan East Coast Flightcraft. Um, guess I'm on. I'm here on behalf of most of our food vendors on our pier. Um, I guess I just wanted to piggyback uh, the line of sight issue, where um, I, I completely understand different visuals, but if you stand directly in front of the pier, um, 
10 feet from it, you have a 10 foot wide entrance to seven businesses on there. So the line of sight with the food, the reason why it is a big concern, obviously, as you piggyback off of, um, it's the height. It, it really is. So the t-shirt shop, it's a pop-up tent, um, and you're not talking 15, 20 feet in the air, um, and you can actually see what else is available. Um, we have um, about 2,800 customers on the lake waterfront um, that, of course, do like to come to Bike Week because of the waterfront, because of what the pier is, and a lot of stuff we heard this year um, was due to, I didn't even realize what was down here. Um, of course, we want to make we it a little bit last prettier. year. <laughs> well, even before, the pier was there for a while. They didn't realize there were stores down there. They didn't realize that there was a restaurant down at the end. Um, I think the only reason why they knew this year was because of the publicity um, that was put in fact, so people just want to see what was happening. Um, and I think for Bike Week, when you have people that only come for that certain week, they don't know it's there because it is blocked. Um, and of course, I know that's one thing that obviously we talked to Sal's, the barbecue guys, um, they get their intake and they, they felt it wasn't as great. So I'm totally about fair. Trust me, I want to make sure that everybody, and that's why I brought up, I think relocating them is great. I, I think cancel them doesn't make sense. And the, the events that we host, the reason why we've always brought in vendors is because the local businesses couldn't keep up. So if Mr. Smith is waiting at a restaurant for an hour, that doesn't make sense. Let's make sure we bring in a vendor so we're taking, it, it's an enjoyable event. And that's what we want. Trust me, we want that place to be absolutely growing year over year. Um, but in order to grow, we have to get... Um, I, I feel an even playing field for all so these businesses can grow and not just for the three four months out of the year we want to try to expand that on both ends which is something that we've talked about so I just want to make sure the line of sight um, in case if I was missing anything it, it is a direct line of sight um, and it's just the height and that's really all it has to come with I mean if there is something that can be done where you can actually see it from standing in the street or even 20 feet away on the opposite side of the um, train if you can see these businesses the sales the barbecue places totally fine with it um, and that's really all it is and that's keep in mind speaking on behalf of these guys that unfortunately could not be here they are all still working um, but that's just kind of what I wanted to put out I, I went and talked to uh, I didn't talk to all the businesses there because uh, um, I, I took the word of uh, uh, one of the vendors up on a boardwalk that did go talk to him but he said he didn't talk to sales pizza and, and I know uh, the Tynes very well and uh, I went and talked to his son uh, about this whole event and he said he didn't have a problem with it Oh. He said uh, what bothered him, it wasn't so much the food vendors, what actually bothered him was the t-shirt tent that, that uh, the Bike Week Association has. Right, yeah, and we did have that. Because, so, you know, because yeah. they can't see, see through I agree. to that. So maybe we can work with Charlie to put a, a clear plastic Absolutely. thing on the back Absolutely. there. Um, so I did talk to Charlie about it, but he said the wind from the lake blew all the T-shirts off. But so if you, you did know, an eyes and glass. if you did a, a plastic one, and keep in mind we are not we're, we're new. We're we're just trying to work with everyone. We're not trying to put anybody out. But of course, just keep the guys that are investing money, like the Tyne family that did a lot. We want to make sure that their investment. I mean, it's a family business is. Uh, a proper investment, I guess, and I just want to give them a fighting chance, or just a visual chance. Yeah, well, would you, uh, I brought up the thing about the signage out on the boardwalk. I think that's You know, answer. something that we could leave there year-round. Absolutely. Uh, is that something that we could talk about together and, and come up with something? I think it's a phenomenal think? idea, absolutely. It makes sense all the way around, and it, I think it's great. I mean, not absolutely. only for Bike Week, but we probably could come up with something that would look pretty nice and, you know, point down to your place, point up to, this, up to the Ames's place, and that kind of thing just to make it more aware of what's down there we could list this list the businesses for you and it'd be great i okay. appreciate that so absolutely. we'll get in touch absolutely all right all right thank you guys you're welcome thank you is there anybody else that would like to come up and uh say something no okay all right then uh is there anything more from the committee members what we'll do is we'll uh we'll schedule another meeting and uh, once Maybe you can get some information, Joe and Paul. Get back to your client about the uh, facade of that of that uh, structure. And and um, I know it's easy to say it's riveted, can't do nothing, but I think we need to go a little bit beyond that and see if there can be something that can be done. Okay. Okay. All right then. Uh, if there's nothing else, I'm going to close the meeting at 6:33. And thank everybody for coming and for their input. <coughs>